Hey there, Akuma fans. Charlie with the Gossiger Application Staff with another video for you. Today is uh, one of my favorite bang for your buck features on the Akuma Control. It's uh, really handy and I'm surprised not more people know about it. I think that's probably my fault for not showing, uh, showing it as frequently as I should. I had a customer who uh, made an observation that he liked the fact that one of his other brand machine tools had a button on the control panel that he could push and the machine would automatically change tools to the next tool without having to go into MDI and keying in your tool change command which may be something like uh, oh I don't know T1 uh, M6 enter and then cycle slam so that it would then put the tool in the spindle. He liked the fact that the control panel had a single button. And you'll just push it and if tool one were in the spindle it would automatically select and bring in tool two. That's kind of neat but uh, it's kind of it's also kind of limiting because what if you're using tools one through five in your program and then you're skipping up to tool 15 well, what do you have to do? Hit the uh, the next tool button about 17 times to make it go forward. Akuma has a feature that is very similar, but it's a lot more versatile. A lot of people don't know about it, so let's go into this. For starters, this feature is on any P300M control. It's also on the S control, so if you have a, a multitasking machine like a Multis or a U machine that has a tool changer, you'll also have this feature, and it's really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reach up and touch my tool data button. That's this guy right here. And uh, most of you are familiar with this page because, well, that's what comes up by default uh, when you power on your Akuma mill. And uh, I've explained this a bunch of times. You're probably already familiar with it. However, let's, let's do it just for grins. If I touch tool 10 in my tool number column here, it, I can tell that it resides in pot 10 in my magazine plus it'll show me the tool length offset and the cutter compensation f specifically for that tool so I don't have to dig for it. Some of you will have gone to your display change and picked up the tool offset and compensation page just because hey this looks familiar to a lot of uh, new Akuma users they see oh hey that looks an awful lot like that other brand uh, control I'll use this. Eh, okay you can but it is a little bit uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to sit here and dig through to try to find the offset that you are using for that particular tool. So I prefer to stick with my magazine info tab simply because when I touch tool 6 the only offset that's available to me is for that particular tool. Plus it shows me what's in the spindle and if anything is in the uh, the next tool delivery station. But I'm in MDI currently, so my F4 operate tool button is grayed out. Have you seen this guy before? Haha, <laughs> this is what we're uh, this is what we're talking about today. By touching the manual button, now operate tool is available for me. And operate tool is just I mean it's a phenomenal way of changing tools and I can do it in manual. I don't have to shift back into MDI. If I'm doing things like ejecting tools from the spindle or touching off tools, hey, I, I like this better than switching back and forth between manual and MDI mode. Before I go use this operate tool button, I'm going to set a pair of parameters that make life really easy for me. So before touching operate tool, I'm going to come over here to the arrow right key and touch that guy. I get a button over F7 that says parameters. By touching it, now I have a pair of values that I'm going to populate that uh, I'll use forever now. A reference tool. Are you using a, a standard to calibrate your touch setter or if you're using like a, a, a gauge pin that's chucked up in an ER32 call it chucker, something of a known value that you're using to set your, uh, your work offset. That's what I'm going to put in the reference tool number. Or I can just, you know, hey, if I'm using a shell mill a lot manually, I can put that tool number in my reference tool. In my case, I've already populated my magazine with a reference tool, just a chunk of steel in a Cat 40 holder, 
in tool number 41. So I will set the reference tool to 41. And do you have a spindle probe? In my case, yes, I do. And I'm going to set that to the tool number, which is 40. These other values, I'm going to leave them alone. They have to do with collision avoidance, and they're not really relevant to what we're talking about today. So we'll just leave that setting the reference tool and the probe tool. And now I'll close that parameter page. What was that all about? Let's go find out. By touching the F4 button, the operate tool, I'll get this cool little window popping up in front that allows me to manually manipulate my tool magazine and tool changer without having to key in a bunch of information. Notice across the bottom, now I have some soft keys, tool change, probe select, reference tool select. Hey, those are those two we just set just now. A tool number select, cursor tool select, next page, minimize, maximize the window, and close. So let's just do a little, a little quickie here just to see what the heck's going on. First off, I would like to call up my spindle probe. That's something I do regularly, and sometimes I can remember what the tool probe number is, sometimes I can't. Well, whatever. By touching F2 probe select, you notice that it automatically called up my tool number 40, plus my tool change, the F1 button, now has an arrow in the upper left-hand corner of the button. By touching it, now my tool changer is activating. I'm going to close this and call up my collision avoidance so you can see my machine. Boom! It just called my probe into the spindle from manual mode without me having to type in any M6, any, any keystrokes other than operate tool, probe select, and tool change. Now let's do the reference tool select. We'll touch F3. It knows now because of those parameters I set that that's tool number 41. Tool change is now available and tap F1 and let's close this again. Go back into my easy. There it is. There's my, my, uh, my reference tool. So okay, that's kind of neat. We can go quickly to select tools that we use on a regular basis but we do have even more functionality in this uh, this operate tool that's just dynamite such as hey tool number select if I hit this guy I get a window coming up asking me alright which tool number do you want in this case I'll let's just go with uh, tool number 21 hit OK and tool change now it's going to put tool 21 in the spindle but hey, that's that's typing numbers. We're trying to get away from that, right? Well, here's a uh, here's another one that just rocks. Let's let that get all the way through. The cursor tool select. This magazine uh, info tab over here is still active, even though we have a pop-up window in front. So if I simply reach up and touch the tool number I want, then use F5 cursor tool select it now knows all right you want to bring 11 into the spindle and tool change we're off and running and now it'll bring up tool number tool number 11. the next page will allow you to scroll down and the minimize maximize just makes this window go away while the um, uh, the soft keys are active it's not really important unless of course you've got some uh, okay no good tool life management down here that you need to see it gets covered up with that window once you're done F8 close gets you out of here and now you can go about your machine without having to change modes you do have you're already in manual mode couple of little things that I would like to point out if your spindle is empty or you are trying to put a, a vacant tool in the spindle operate tool is not going to function unless you've gone in and turned off your no tool interlock uh, parameter uh, in that case you probably want to use your G116 or G111 depending on what your tool change macro G code is most of those tool change macros have built in an interlock release that says hey I don't care if there's a tool in the spindle or not I want you to exercise this thing. But you also do need to make sure that you set these parameters before you try to select a reference tool or a probe number. If I were to set this back to the default, the factory default of zero, now if I get into my operate tool and I attempt to do a probe select, 
it will tell me, nope, you don't have one. Well, okay, that's just because I didn't set the parameters. Last thing to notice is that if you are not in manual mode, then your operate tool key will not be available. It says, nope, it just doesn't exist. It's grayed out. So make sure you're in manual mode. Great little tool. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your Gossiker application staff. My email is in the channel description, so you can ask me directly if you like. And uh, keep the comments a come, and I will uh, continue to create videos to answer any questions I possibly can. Thanks, and have a great day.